mind all the time that the reason that you're here is to provide the hopefully help provide the best education you can for the kids a couple of final thoughts that I had as I was sitting in my office this afternoon is that one of the things that the school system is going to be needing in the years ahead is increased parental involvement if there's a disappointment that I've seen this year is that the school board has gone out of its way and the administration has gone out of its way on a number of occasions to hold meetings, seminars, discussions on the things that are going on in the school only to see them very poorly attended by the community. Uh, and then at election time, sitting in a number of coffees, hearing complaints about what's going on and the parents not having taken the time to understand the situation up to that point. There are a number of times during the year that the board will have different meetings and different open houses and things to understand what's going on. I think it's even more important than ever. As money becomes tight, as school resources become even tighter, that parents' involvement becomes even greater. Leadership of the parents, the family of the school, the administration, uh, and the school board is absolutely essential in the years ahead. Another thing that's going to happen, I think, is going to be a return, perhaps, to more basics in education. Um, I like to think of it as uh, uh, the basics plus the tools to provide children for the 21st century living. I don't think we can go back to the days of the one-room schoolhouse and there's reading, writing, and arithmetic. I think the world is uh, far more uh, uh, broad today to, uh, to be able to need and demand more from our students. We've got to find ways to get more computers into the school, more hands-on activities with those kind of, that kind of equipment if we're going to provide our children with the right education. I think we're going to be in a real struggle in the next several years. It's going to be interesting to sit on the sidelines for a while, as long as I can sit on the sidelines, and watch the integrity of the system under attack. I think it's going to be important to maintain the integrity of the Cape Elizabeth school system. We don't have a Sears plant here in town. We don't have a General Motors plant with 4,000 workers. We manufacture one thing in Cape Elizabeth, and that's where our tax dollars go, and that's the school system. Our kids are our product, and we've got 1,100 or 12, 1,500 kids a year in the school system that we need to provide them with the best education possible because, let me tell you, we may have a wonderful coastline and a nice community to live, but that isn't going to get you through the rest of your life. And we need to remember to make sure that we tell the town council that, and when the time comes to vote, to vote for town council representatives who support that as well. I want to thank Charlie for his support, Jan, of course, for hers, Peter, and especially Loretta, whose courage, insights, and friendship will always be very special to me. The administrators of the school, who we may not always see eye to eye, and I'm sure that will probably continue as I just come in and bug you as a parent, uh, but I don't think I've ever seen a more dedicated group of professionals. Connie, your staff, Connie and Dee, um, I will miss you all, but I probably won't miss having to get in the car at 7.30 when the snow is falling in January. I'll be able to switch on Channel 38 and watch you all here. Uh, it's been a rewarding experience, and I look forward to keeping you all as friends and watching you as the years go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, John. Can I go home now? <laughs> oh, Could I have a moment? Of course. Thank you. Tonight is Peter Leslie's last night as chairman of our school board. And on behalf of the board, we want to thank him for his leadership during this year, a year of real challenges and some very important decisions. We've been real fortunate to have his skills and his talents during these times. His financial expertise has provided a smooth budget process for us. He was responsible for writing a new computer program, which is being used for present and long range planning. And his leadership has been um, uh, greatly, appreci greatly appreciated in contract negotiations that are ongoing right now. He's been uh, on roofs, and he's looked into bomb scares, and he's done all of this, as John Kennedy pointed out in Profiles of Courage, he's done it with grace under pressure. He's given so many hours of dedicated service to the Cape Elizabeth School System this year, as chairman that it just seems inadequate to just say thank you and so here's a plaque to help you remember this challenging year and we thank you very much for a fine job and we're glad you'll be with us another three years Peter. thank you very much thank you Loretta and thank all of you 
I'm at loss for words because uh, I, uh, I thought maybe this would happen uh, at the next meeting when I uh, turned the, uh, the gavel over to a new uh, chairperson, as I see the term well, is. Well, I'll give uh, it to you again and say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you all very much. And uh, I may or may not have uh, you know, something as uh, articulate and uh, insightful as uh, you two uh, just delivered, but I'll have it for my next meeting. Uh, for our next meeting. So let us um, go forward if there's no further uh, informal business. The, uh, the first item on the agenda is, as usual, adjustments to the agenda. Are there any from the board or uh, others here present? Yes. I just want to note that the high school representatives will not be at the meeting tonight. Okay. Any adjustments from uh, the public? Okay, approval of the school board uh, minutes, the meeting of uh, April 9th. Have you all read them? Does uh, anybody have any, Charlie? Um, <clears throat> 90 employee substance abuse policy, first reading. There was no first reading. It was tabled without discussion before it was tabled before it was even discussed. That's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, as amended, do I hear a motion? I move to accept with the amendment. Yeah. Second. Second. <laughs> and further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> the business manager's report, D. Thank you, Peter. On page 72 of your packet, you have the uh, revenues as of <laughs> April 30th, 1991. Uh, please note that we have received $7,281,000 or 82% of our anticipated revenues for the year and that this past uh, few weeks the state has notified, not officially in writing, but that we will uh, be losing 10% of our subsidy for May, which is like $15,000 for Cape Elizabeth. The June subsidies are only anticipated uh, to be received in July, so we'll have an accounts receivable we can still expend the money up to what we're authorized to. And on, a, on that same note, on a weekly basis, we've been running a, uh, an appropriation control report and kind of uh, getting a, an estimate as to where we project we will be uh, June 30th. As of last Thursday or Friday the 9th, uh, we had expended like $7.37 million dollars we have encumbered $88,000, and these are mostly uh, uh, bills for tuition for uh, specialized students, uh, tuitions, consultants, and things of the sort. Uh, therefore, we this along with there are four teacher administrative payrolls left. There are seven weekly staff payrolls left. We have made an allowance for the summer accruals for the teachers. We have made an allowance for the summer accruals for the weekly staff as far as vacation time that is due to these people. Uh, we have made an allowances for uh, a, the benefits along with the $50,000 that we do anticipate for a balance come June 30th, along with a $15,000 that we've set aside for the middle school building study. Therefore, you know, we're on a weekly basis, every time we, we pay the bills and do the payroll, uh, we run the reports. Uh, it's the time of year where we're trying to close out a lot of the federal accounts, which we'll get into later, uh, realistically, we are looking for the $50,000 as a, as a balance that we projected sometimes way back. Now, Dee, let me just ask you about sure. the account receivable. That would be uh, uh, almost $200,000, wouldn't it? Well, 175000 yeah, 149000 rough, give or take. And uh, we can really show that on our balance sheet as, uh, as a receivable. Yeah, we do it, uh, well, through the... Uh, what the archers do, they'll treat it as, a, as a, a receivable, but the school board has the authority to spend up to $8.86 million. We cannot spend that money because our revenue shortfall will be uh, in the vicinity of $40,000 in the regular program plus the $15,000 of the state subsidy. So we're going to have a shortfall of roughly fifty-five. So therefore, our bottom line, less the 50000 
uh, balance is more like 8831, less than 50,000. Uh, like school lunch, they do treat the subsidy for June that we only receive in July as a receivable, but it's counted as really as cash to close the year. Okay. A lot, all the school systems in the states will be facing that same problem. We had thought uh, a month ago that we would receive the June subsidy at the end of June before July 1st, but that's not the so, so basically the town finances that for us to the extent we spend that money. That's correct. And that comes out of their cash balances. That's correct. And uh, I'm sure you've done this. Uh, you, they're aware of that. And uh, uh, I'll talk to Michael first thing in the morning. Uh, that along with, well, the town's investments in that, I mean, it would carry us over for a couple of days. I would imagine the subsidies to be released probably July, the first week of July anyway. Yeah. So okay. depending what the weekend looks like, it might be just a few days as far as the cash flow being. Uh, well, I, I would keep the uh, the, the town uh, uh, I will. Uh, I intimately advised of that because it will have an effect on their cash position. So that's basically where we stand as far as the, the general program, as far as uh, revenues and expenditures. Uh, people, the staff has done a great job. Everything that we're spending right now is either approved by the superintendent's office or my office. Uh, purchase orders are being used. Uh, encumbrances are being done when it's, uh, when it's feasible. Uh, next year, I think we'll have a, a better handle on it because uh, we'll start the year with all the encumbrances. So it'll be interesting. Yes, John. In our May um, subsidy, the state is keeping back a portion of that, correct? Ten percent. What will, what will keep them from not do, from doing that to our June payment, even though that's deferred till July? That's a possibility. I mean, that's up to Augusta, I guess, legislature. Uh, from what we're hearing, that hasn't been talked about, but who knows? Have you received any memo? Or? There is one that I just got in today, which I really haven't digested myself thoroughly. Um, essentially, from what I know, which is, again, it's pretty much what Dee is saying, and this is kind of coming in by bits and pieces, uh, there has some, been some legislation passed which really affects just the issues that Dee is talking about. Um, if there were another emergency decision, and from what we've seen, of course, obviously that is possible, it would require more legislation. So far, that has not happened. Um, there is a, I just received a memo today, there is a sort of step-by-step -step procedure, partly for school administrative districts, which are funded differently from municipalities, districts that are part of municipality. Uh, and we are given some guidance because, as Steve's already pointed out, we're all in this situation. Some districts are impacted much more heavily than we are simply because of the nature of their funding. Uh, but we do have some guidance as to how to handle it. I have one other question on, on federal and state programs. Yeah. On the grants, yeah. uh, the REC Diverse Intelligence, that's Ted DeMille's grant, That's correct. correct. Okay, he's going to be changing grades next year. Yeah. Will, will that have any impact on his program? Uh, what here's what I've done. Last uh, Wednesday or Thursday, I sent a memo to all, all the people in charge of these grants and given them a, a year-to-date uh, balance because a lot of these have to be closed out by June 30th. So these people are now working with their staff and whoever probably will be replacing them and cutting out purchase orders. I should be signing a lot of purchase orders next week and it's all relative to most of these. Uh, some of these, like the local entitlements, some of these balances will be carried forward into the next year. Uh, Ted's grants, the two of them, for $2,500 balance, roughly $2,300, whatever it may be, will be expended. Because he's had this since 89. That's correct. This is the second uh, we year. Had a, they, they gave us another year last year, but they will, I believe they will not grant us another year. And the other two were the uh, African American Studies and yep. the Pond Cove uh, Maine Historical. Historical. It doesn't look like much has been spent. That too. Uh, talking to these people that are responsible for the grants, a lot of these are, they've geared up to spend the money. They just haven't done it yet. They'll be done within the next four to five weeks. Hopefully by hopefully by June fifteenth, all these grants should be in place and and, uh, and expended. In the um, intermediate unit, did the the uh, African American studies did that visit take place, et cetera? Thursday. <coughs> okay. Okay. 
Do you have a po there's a poster. Yeah. Yep. So hopefully by next month you'll see uh, differences here. You'll see more money being spent in these grants. Yep. Uh, the following page outlines the food service program for the month of uh, April and also for year to date. April uh, school lunch program had revenues of 28,000 with expenditures of 24, or a net cash net cash realized of 4,293 dollars. For the year, however, our revenues are, are 270,000 compared to uh, expenditures of 249 for $21,000 cash realized. However, we started the year with $36,915 in the in the red or deficit. Therefore, we still have $15,714 to make up. The following page gives you a better highlight of the school lunch program because it deals with the inventories and everything else into consideration. Uh, last year at this time, we had a fund balance of a, of a negative $24,000 compared to this year's fund balance as a positive $5,300. So there's a variance there of $29,707, which is quite remarkable. But is, that's the $25,000 we put in it this year? No. No? No. So the 25000 if you look at the, uh, the first line on the red, it says year-to-date profit and loss. We're still showing 3798 and that comes from your, comes from your 21000 profit, less than 25000 I backed out from the uh, local appropriation. So we're, we're just treating this on a year-to-year -year basis. Okay. The twenty five is like, put it aside for now. We're going to use it to, to close the year in the black, don't get me wrong. Hopefully we close the year in the black because we still have to make up the, uh, the 15000 in cash, but then on the fund balance, all we have to make up right now is, oh, well, we're in the black. You're in the black. Yeah, yes. which is great. It's a big variance. This job. Hey, on your appropriation control report, uh, 9030.4340, um, way back, for local program subsidy, you show um, $25,175 spent. Yep. Uh, that is a, uh, we kind of checked last month in the month of April for uh, people going to a conference. The check was sent out like the 20s, late, late part of the month. The check has been canceled and reversed, so you'll see that it's coming somewhere back. else. Pardon? Is it, is it somewhere else, or is the, was it drawn on that account? It was drawn on that account. It shouldn't have been, but it's going to be reverted back to 25 because that check was voided. The people okay. didn't, didn't go to the conference. Okay. Uh, so school lunch program looks, well, looks great. Uh, the next report is the community services. That, of course, of course, is in great shape. They have, as of April 30, collected $460,000 and have expended 359000 uh, What is the projected uh, surplus for the year, and will it go back to the town? We projected thirty-five, so 35000 as a balance. Now, does that go back to the town? No, that's or does budget it come back for to next, year's, next year's uh, revenues. The same we do. Like we projected our 50, they projected 35. Okay. Uh, they're busy right now. We've set up an account for them where they're taking in a lot of money right now for summer program, but we've set up a, a uh, an account for, uh, I forget what we call it, it's uh, prepaid, prepaid revenues, pre-received pre revenues, I should say, for next year because, you know, they've received like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for summer programs already. Mm -hmm. uh, the following report is the uh, enrollments to date. Uh, this month we had we're up one student compared to last month, 1,576. And the last three reports are basically for your information on the fuel oil for the build buildings, the buses, and the electricity, that's uh, the energy. And I found that one to be a little interesting because it's year to date, we're down 49,396 kilowatt hours, but yet our costs are up $7,115. Uh, I think the system is going to do us a lot of wonders down the road. It's just that it's, it's quite premature, plus the rate increases that we received in November, December was, were quite hefty. Mm -hmm. So things are looking up. Uh, we are presently working, and I don't think it's quite online yet, but the meter is, they did something to the meter to, uh, to adjust it so that it can, uh, we can preset the demand. 
but I don't think it's quite in place. It was something they had to, to, uh, to do to it. But at this time of year, demand is really not a problem because your cold months are gone. But what this will enable us to do is, is kind of preset, instead of having a 450 reading for demand, we could probably set it at 375. And based on estimates, we should at least save $1,000 a month just on the demand. The usage is something else. We're going to have to have uh, in-services with our staff. I think it's a proven thing now that if you leave a room, you turn off or shut the light, whatever you want to say, instead of leaving it on, and you know you save money before you say, well, leave it on. Uh, a lot of these things we'll have to we'll have to have in services with our staff, I believe. Yes, John. On the fuel and oil, uh, we've been watching those steadily decrease. What we think is going to be a loss yeah. if the weather continues the way. Do you think that might be a wash that we won't It'll lose? It'll be a wash, and and, and hopefully uh, the last month we had enough in there for three fill-ups. We've had one since. We're geared up for another one, sometimes in June. Uh, that will be uh, won't be all respect. No, not in the fuel. Account. But we won't. You don't think we're going to lose money? No. Okay. It's they've just been it's been dropping dramatically every oh, month. Well, we've paid uh, thirty six seven five last uh, lately compared to a high of fifty six cents. That's what twenty cents. You know what's interesting is that the degree days yeah. practically the same as the I previous know. year, and yet we all thought we had a very warm winter. Didn't we? It was six degrees warmer than average. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the degree days. I'm not. Well, it will be interesting. Now it's warmer than average. Yeah. Actually, the average temperature this winter was over freezing. Yeah. I think it it seems hard to believe when you look at uh, 3,706 yeah. degree no. days versus uh, 3,691. They're practically identical. So anyway, but next year we'll have two years back to look at plus the new year. So we'll have you know more of a. Uh, of a, uh, of a tool to work with. Sure. Is the conservation plan in place? It, it, the, the, what we've been paying money for that we were matched on yeah. the federal level, that it's completely in place. There's, there's nothing else. It's all in place. The only thing we need to do Loretta, is adjust that one meter at the middle school where we can, and I think we, we're going to try to go a step further where we might be able to take a reading from the high school and the middle school and then you can you can look at the, at the printout and say, well, which building is using what at what time? Because sometimes if your shops, let's say the motors all come on at the same time, and then if you're doing the same thing at the, the middle school and the high school, plus your cafeterias, uh, the high school caf is electricity, the other ones are propane. But if everything comes on at a certain time, then you can look at your peak, and we've identified a lot of times it's like 9:30, a quarter of 10. And that's when your kitchens are going. So we might be able to do certain things and shed the power and say, well, instead of you coming on at 9.30, you're going to delay you till quarter or 10 and do something else in between because it reads every 15 minutes. And that's how your demand bill is set for the month. At, at what point in time was this completely in place? March. Okay. Uh, while we're on that, uh, we did apply through the budget process for more energy money last year. I think you saw a note in your uh, packet. That concept was there but they just didn't have the money to fund it so there is eighteen thousand dollars of revenue that we're going to lose plus and then well we have a uh, a budget amount of thirty six thousand dollars for expenditures too so that's an offset really uh i'd like to update you later on something else that we might want to propose as far as we'll work with cmp and they might they will they have a program where they will reimburse us up to fifty percent of materials if we do light projects lighting projects and things of the sort. But we're just going to look at that and probably come back to you in, in July or August with some proposal, if any at all. See what the building committee says first. Okay, thank you, Dee. Any further questions? Thank you. Let's see. The middle school, Lynn and Rachel. Good evening, I'm Rachel Walls and this is Lynn Powers. Um, starting with the sixth grade, they have an award assembly tomorrow. And they just got back from Chiwanki and they all loved it. And they just finished taking their SRAs. And the seventh graders also finished taking the SRA at the same time the sixth graders did. Um, they, have a, they just had a guest speaker today from, for ADAD from Mercy Drug Abuse. The 
program there and there are course selections for the grades due on Friday and on May 23rd it's the seventh eighth grade band and chorus concert okay um, the eighth grade is going to have natural helpers coming in and they're having a Chinese feast um, on May 22nd and the students in the life skills program went down to the high school and worked with the daycare kids um, we're having a last dance um, June 7th and it's informal. Um, our spring sports are well underway and we have lots of participants. And um, Mr. Willie Moore is back as the eighth grade social studies teacher. And three of our student teachers um, finished their studies. And we'll be getting progress reports tomorrow. And um, we'd like to thank Mr. Holt for all he's done over the last three years on the school board. Thank you very much. <coughs> communications. Connie? Start out. Uh, some of our communications um, are actually from staff about either retirements, resignations, uh, and I will take those up in that particular section of the agenda. Uh, but I do want to note I have a notice here from uh, Sharon Merrill, Director of Guidance at the high school. Uh, that has uh, a notice of the postponement of the evening of excellence that was scheduled for tomorrow night. Um, and that sort of leads into an explanation of why that is being postponed. It is being postponed to Monday, June 3rd. As I suppose everybody is aware, we have had another tragedy um, affect our high school. Jean Thibault, who has been an outstanding teacher for many years at the high school, uh, suffered a fatal heart attack on Saturday. And once again, a uh, quick response team, the faculty and, the, and administration came together and tried to, uh, to uh, lay out a course of um, acknowledging that death. Uh, there was a, uh, in the most appropriate way possible, uh, it is, uh, however, obviously a time of sadness, a time of trying to remember um, all the good things that people do remember about a strong teacher, particularly one like Mr. Tebow. The high school did have an assembly um, Monday afternoon, yesterday afternoon, and uh, for people's general information, the funeral is tomorrow at 2 in Cumberland, and people uh, will be attending, of course, from the school. I also want to note, uh, and again, this is in the paper. If, if uh, you have not noticed, uh, you might want to look up to see really, I think, a nice uh, summary of Mr. Tebow's outstanding career, some of at least, at least some of the highlights. And we want to note the family has set up a, a Jean Tebow scholarship uh, in lieu of flowers and contributions can be sent to the principal's office at Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, and that scholarship will be awarded, uh, I would assume it will be awarded to a student intending to go on uh, in science, but that is still to be determined. With that inevitable note of sadness, I will move on to the rest of the report. Okay. Since I um, last uh, last month's meeting, I did note that we would uh, include a small feature called Good News. Um, I'm not sure that uh, this is the kind of thing that we want to have as a absolute monthly item because, again, as I said last month, there are times when one worries about including some but inevitably leaving some out, not intentionally but simply because the communication chain link that brings these things to a board meeting is not always uh, reliable enough to give us everything and there are lots of things that are not included but I will go through at least some highlights tonight uh, from the high school William Freeman son of mr. And mrs. David Freeman jr. Cape Elizabeth High School jr. has been awarded a fellowship in marine biology for a week-long Institute during the summer at Bigelow Labs Mount Desert Island we also want to publicly acknowledge and congratulate 
Each year, the National Merit Corporation awards scholarships to a select group of National Merit finalists in recognition of superior performance in the PSAT and the National Merit Qualifying Test and demonstrated academic talent and performance in high school. Cape Elizabeth High School is honored to have two scholarship finalists this year, receiving a 2000 National Merit Corporation scholarship are Peter Freilinger and Damian Safer. In addition, the, I'd like to read a, a notice about the Presidential Scholars. This year marks the 25th year of the United States Presidential Scholars Program. Winners must include one young man and one young woman from each state in possession of the United States. The winning scholars are invited to Washington, D.C. for four days in June to attend a White House ceremony and receive a Presidential Scholar Medallion. Selection is based on factors including academic excellence, <coughs> demonstrated leadership ability, service to school and community, and achievement in a specific field of interest. The high school notes uh, a sort of uh, summary of recent winners. In 1983, Kristen Ammerling was named a Presidential Scholar. In 1985, Jean Lambrew was a finalist. In 1987, Jay Wildman was a finalist. And Jennifer Anastasoff. Anastasia. Anastasia, thank you, was a presidential scholar. And in 1989, Andrew Russ was named a presidential scholar. This year, Cape Elizabeth High School senior, Peter Freilinger, has been named a finalist candidate in the Presidential Scholars Program. The Presidential Scholars will be announced by the White House Commission on Presidential Scholars in early June. So certainly congratulations to all of those people. Going on, we have a notice from um, Pond Cove that uh, the math fair awards at Pond Cove Intermediate Unit went to first place Emily Reed, second place Marion Tyson, and third place Christian Cox. The panel of judges selected winners from a pool of 25 entries and congratulations to all participants. We also have a poetry contest winner, Carl Burnett, and actually his poem is included here and since it's quite short I thought I would take this opportunity to share it with you. Uh, this is um, from a youngster who's in grade four. The Story Genie. As he closes his eyes and focuses his thoughts, the Story Genie begins to unwind his ball of yarns and dreams, thoughts and songs and tales of old come drifting from his mind. From dishcloths to diamonds, antelope to piemen, he sits, and so do I, enraptured in his tales, never boring, always roaring, the story streams inside him rush and flow. But you may ask, just who is this clever creature? Well, if the truth be known, he's nothing more than my teacher. <laughs> I don't know if that was written for National Teacher Day, but uh, I think that would be a wonderful, um, appropriate moment. The National Mythology Contest winners include Tyler Cole, Vince Flaherty, Nicholas Jussaud, Mark Joyce, Jack Lombard, Mike Monroe, Edward C., and Justin Wesley. Two students, Ed C. and Vince Flaherty, received medals of excellence for scoring in the top 10%. And I don't know, I would assume there would be connections between the recently conducted Odyssey theme and doing well on the National Mythology Contest. And congratulations to Ben Putnam and runner-up Emily Scott and the Spelling Bee winners. And finally, kindergarten screening was completed this week with 114 children meeting teachers and specialists at the Thomas Memorial Library, thanks to our wonderful parent volunteers who assisted in this process. And that summarizes that section. Actually, congratulations to everybody else that is not on the list. <laughs> Always worry about things like that, but congratulations to all the people on the list, too. Okay, moving on, the next item, schedule of orientation, very simply, um, and I as superintendent, certainly uh, congratulations to all in our recent board election. I look forward to working with all of you. I understand that the process here is to be sworn in at the council meeting in June. Um, and my suggestion, actually I've gone ahead and scheduled a workshop to follow that to be the uh, uh, formal orientation session, not a meeting, but a workshop. I hope that that will meet with your schedules. If anybody has any trouble with doing it at that point, 
please let me know. Is that op that's open to the public? Yes, any workshop, of course. Yeah. Um, just wanted to it's not, however, I, I would think the public would not find this a particularly exciting moment. We have to sit down and go through ground rules um, and go over organizations. Uh, we need to talk about things like subcommittee structures. I will have some sample policies. I did in my agenda notes mention to you that I am very anxious to start a review of the policy book. I do recommend that we will be, um, I'd like to work with the MSA MA uh, policy board because I have worked with them in the past and I found it a very helpful service. It costs a little but it's relatively inexpensive. Those are all the kinds of issues we will be discussing in that orientation meeting. But those members of the public who are interested in finding out how boards work and what they're supposed to do and not supposed to do, that will be a good opportunity to, to sit and listen. Sure. Somebody wants so, to. <laughs> and ask a question. Um, okay. Um, the next item uh, is we have, some of us have met and tried to organize the workshop which we are planning for the 21st <coughs> of May listed at the bottom of the agenda. Uh, we have found it's impossible to schedule that particular workshop for a night that we aren't in competition with something else. Um, and that particular night we're in competition with a high school spring concert. I'm sorry about that, but uh, we, we tried hard to find another night um, that was open and we simply couldn't do it. So we've gone ahead to schedule it. Um, play loudly, we'll all hear you. <laughs> the, um, Anyway, the, it is scheduled for the high school library. I have had uh, some interesting responses to our rather brief discussion last month when we were trying to set this up. Um, and so essentially, uh, I see this workshop as being made up of three elements and we will try to keep the presentations short and crisp uh, and no more than perhaps 15 minutes from three separate people or groups of people on these topics so that it can be an opportunity for give and take not only with board members but also with any public uh, uh, members who choose to come. Um, first of all, I, th I saw it as an opportunity to try to give an overview of issues in school reform that address raising expectations for all students. This is a national issue. It is sometimes, I think, hard to believe that Cape Elizabeth is as affected by some of the reform literature uh, as perhaps uh, large inner city school districts. But we too share a concern that all students need to learn and stretch themselves in ways that perhaps were not as important a generation or so ago. So we need to have at least some context setting that talks about overall issues. The second issue that we will include is uh, focusing in on our current planning for improving the math curriculum K-12 and that will be an opportunity to talk a little bit about how we see specialization um, and to s in a certain type of leveling in the future. We'd like to discuss that and explain what we have in mind. Uh, and then the third element, of course, we had started out talking about gifted and talented programs and we will try to uh, connect those to the other themes that we are talking about. Somehow I um, uh, found that pe there were some people in the community who listening to our comments from last month uh, seemed to have a fear that we were dropping our so-called level three gifted and talented services at the middle school uh, at Ponca, the upper grades four, five in the middle school. Um, that is not something that we are discussing doing. I appreciate the calls or letters that people have sent to me um, about that, uh, uh, that particular issue and we will try to make it clear in our remarks on the 21st uh, what we do have in mind. Dr. Goldman? Yes. Um, where you had trouble scheduling this particular workshop, we might consider in the future a Saturday morning workshop. I remember we had a leveling workshop um, a couple years ago that was very well attended and it was on a Saturday. So that is a possible That's option in the future. Good to uh, remember. I wonder, I can't remember if that one was in the winter or not, but I wonder what success we would have in May and June. True, but there are conflicts in the winter too, because there are times that we as boards have sat in on meetings when our children have had other activities going on the same night. So. It, at this time of year, it's very difficult, and I think that is an, uh, certainly what I, one I had not thought of. 
I think, however, this one is scheduled for the 21st. I mean, I've tried to bounce it around, and I, I don't dare at this point do any changing. If there are no questions or comments, we'll move on. Next item. Um, in your package, you received a copy of a letter from our insurance carriers indicating that we have been uh, awarded a $71,000 um, portion of the costs that you incurred last summer from asbestos removal. Um, frankly, we were pleasantly surprised to get that much because asbestos removal is one of those items that is very controversial and you never know what you're going to get from insurance coverage. Uh, as I explained in my agenda notes, obviously this is money that was originally attached to the bonds that you took out last year and the year before that the town council approved. Uh, though whatever purposes that were approved for those bonds are uh, possible purposes that can be used, this money can be used for. On the other hand, uh, we will need to have uh, review our projects where we are and what uh, what makes sense to do. At one point, I considered um, recommending to you uh, that we continue with the uh, with the roof situation on. Uh, the D section roof, which has been patched, has not been leaking, and uh, but clearly will have to be um, repaired or replaced. The issue, of course, right now is that we have advertised for and are beginning to get responses from architectural and engineering firms for the study of the middle school property in general. The advice I'm getting from the engineers that we're working with on various other projects um, basically is to try to get that study in before we actually make decisions. So at the moment, I'm not recommending anything specific. Um, we do have the portable um, shoring up process that I have discussed before that is on tap. I have been working with the engineers to get the bid spec packages together and so on. I'll be reporting, no doubt, in June on that one. So, you know, the good news is we have some money back. The bad news, I suppose, is we got more than enough ways to use it, but we also, of course, must go through a council procedure. We cannot spend that ourselves without authorization from the council. And finally, the last day of school. Um, I, like everybody else, is a little confused as to why the state is talking about possibly shortening the school year by as many as two days. Um, and the notices that I received from the um, commissioner's office on that and from the main school management certainly point out that that's really not, uh, it is not the intention of the legislature to knock down two days of school. Uh, frankly, for uh, most school districts, there's very little savings because our, our uh, negotiated contracts for, would, would hold us to uh, salary agreements for a certain specific amount. The only thing that could be saved would be, I suppose, the heat, lights, well, it wouldn't be much heat, um, the kind of operating costs that are minimal when you're talking about leaving schools open for two days. Um, so I do not see in our circumstances anything to be gained by that, and I see no reason for us to even uh, contemplate it. Um, I did, however, in my memo to you on the calendar point out that the this year's calendar as well as our original proposed calendar for next year included an extra day in trying to track down where that came from and looking at past calendars to see what the past practice was. I, f I discovered that apparently a day had been added in anticipation of the state's funding the extra day. There was a memo from the governor's office a couple of years ago that went out at a time when you were probably um, preparing uh, this year's calendar or discussing it. And um, that seems to have been the background for that. Since that plan did not go through, there was no funding, and you've not added officially any funding, then that uh, eliminates the teacher workshop, which was originally on our calendar for the 18th. As I said again, I know that many teachers come voluntarily. That's fine and, and much appreciated. But we have to be careful that, uh, for mandatory attendance, that that's clear. And so that I recommend that. Um, the calendar be amended to reflect the reality of the situation. When we began school a day late for the elementary and middle school, mm -hmm. did that ever get evened out? Is, does the, is the high school going one day longer than the elementary and middle school? Or 
You're talking about the emergency day? Yes, the, the emergency day, the, the first day of school. Well, technically, yes. Um, but <coughs> they, those kinds of emergency situations are um, very hard to compensate for. Um, and I think since we are now dealing with the end of the year situation, we've had other kinds of emergencies, frankly, at the high school, too, which have um, somewhat balanced that out. Um, I think we are, you know, we're even. Okay. So everybody's ending school on Monday. Yes. June 18th. Uh, 17th. June 17th. 17th. I know that that sounds like a, a very strange way to end the year. Why do we have that Monday? Well, because we had one snow day, and that pushed the um, last day of school to a Monday. And um, since we are by statute, uh, and I think it minimally uh, locally realized we want to hold school for the 180 days, that's the way it fell out. And that's my report. So do Charlie, we, do we need to move on on that June 18th? Do we need to make a motion and approve it as a board? Or is that an administrative? It's basically an administrative, unless there was some reason why this was an item of controversy. In other words, uh, if you agree with what, what I have uh, researched and what my view of this is, I wasn't here when that decision was made. If my interpretation is correct, then it's an error and it can be simply adjusted administratively. If, however, there are other issues, then it would be, in other words, for whatever reason, let's say you wanted to add a couple of days, you would have to, that would definitely require a vote. Even though we approved that, that yeah. schedule? You can technically, you can certainly take a uh, vote on it to make sure that we're, you know, because it is in fact something that you, calendar that you approved is being amended. I guess the simplest way to answer your question is yes, you can vote on it. Considering the legal ramifications we've had this year, I would like to cross the T's and dot the I's. Very good. I move that we uh, disband June 18th as a teacher work day. I second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. The next item is the board chairman's report. And uh, those of you who can see the agenda uh, will see that there's nothing on it. This is the, uh, the second straight school board meeting where the board chairman's report has been blank. Now, people could interpret that in different ways. The interpretation that I choose to give it is that things are running pretty well. Uh, for the uh, perhaps every single board meeting that, uh, that I chaired up until the last two, there was quite a lot on the board chairman's agenda. Not all of it was a lot of fun. And I do, uh, I do think that uh, really the, the ship has uh, been pulled together at, and uh, I certainly attribute that to uh, Dr. Goldman's leadership. I uh, was not kidding when I said earlier that I didn't expect to uh, recognize tonight the fact that this was my last uh, uh, meeting as the chairman of the board, um, and I still really don't have much to say. Perhaps I will uh, when I turn the gavel over to the new chairman uh, at our June meeting. But looking forward, as we have said in many times in many places recently, there is much to do. We have the issue of space, the issue of the budget, and of course the issue of strengthening our curriculum, and a few others. Uh, I look forward to uh, working with all of you uh, in the years to come and uh, sitting uh, a little further down the, <laughs> uh, down the table here. So uh, the next item, uh, is unfinished business approval of the 1991 school calendar, the second reading. Have you all had a chance to uh, consider that? And Connie, do you want to make any comments about that? Just for the public, since it was discussed last month, um, we have really made no substantive changes uh, in, in the sense that there are workshop days, uh, teacher workshop days, as well as released afternoons. However, after uh, receiving some feedback from parent groups, individual parents, uh, obviously the discussion at the board level, 
um, and talking to the Teachers Association, um, the, the administrative uh, team met and reviewed that and made a few more changes, notably the four uh, Wednesday to Friday shifts for released afternoons as marked in this calendar. Um, I do want to note that uh, people who have been around in the system for a little while, like Michael Efron and Barbara Powers, who are both working at the high school, uh, when there were some Friday afternoon released at uh, workshop days, um, unfortunately, I suppose maybe only in good weather, but anyway, um, that sometimes uh, with older teenagers that has been seen as an, as an opportunity to party. I said I would surface that as a concern. Um, we certainly hope that that doesn't happen and that uh, we will we'll give it a try in the spirit of let's see if this works better than the Wednesday um, and helps make people's lives a little saner as far as accommodating vacation times. Other than that, I have no comment. Okay, we need a motion to approve this. Yes. Do I hear such a motion? Yes, I move that we approve the school calendar for 1991-1992 as written. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Charlie? I noticed that when you moved the Wednesdays to Fridays, they preceded usually the long weekends or That's vacations. Uh, the staff isn't going to take advantage of those, are they? Well, no. I, I don't mean that as a slight. But no. Um, I mean, you know, it's one wonders about human nature being distracted and so on. I have to say I've worked in other systems when we use the Friday for other, for the same kinds of reasons people have talked about here to try to accommodate family needs. I found the staff extremely cooperative. I did not have any trouble with that at all, and I wouldn't anticipate having it here. Because our early release days are very early. Mm. But I, I, I really feel that we have a professional oh. staff. Well, I, I would have a worry more that, uh, you know, Friday afternoon is not usually any of our best periods of the week, uh, you know. It's, we're not fresh, and uh, so I think we ought to be, you know, watching it quite closely to see what effect it has. And student attendance, too. Yes, we yeah. certainly, I mean, we've, that's part of this uh, venture is to look at the uh, data and see what happens. Yeah. Keep track. Okay. Because parents could take that as well. It's a half day. We're going away. Why don't we just take the whole day and leave Go the night before? Evening. So it is something to watch. Yes. Okay, uh, should I forget to take the vote? Just no. for old time's <laughs> sake? <laughs> All in favor? Okay, new business. Done. Okay. Um, this is a time of year when we normally get into a number of staffing changes. I felt that we had so many changes at the current situation that I have tried to give you uh, both individual school charts as well as summaries. But before we actually get into those lists, I want to share, especially for the public's um, benefit, uh, I have received three, well, two resignations, one resignation, one retirement and uh, one request for transfer, and I will take them in order, uh, mostly in order when I receive them. Received a letter from Don Richards. I think people are quite aware of this, and, and no doubt we've already had some um, public recognition of the many years that Don has spent in the system and the contributions he has made, and I have no doubt there will be others. Um, but uh, he is submitting his resignation. Uh, actually, he is going to be moving out of state and uh, looking forward to, um, uh, I, I, I have a hard time saying retirement and Don Richards in the same sentence, but uh, I know that he will continue his work with young people, particularly in the coaching and, and I think some teaching, but out of state. Um, then I have also received a letter uh, from Mary Jo Thompson, who has been in the system for a number of years now as a uh, extremely gifted integrated arts coordinator teacher. Um, she and her family have decided to move out of state uh, to relocate and uh, so obviously she is telling us that she is leaving. Uh, she, I haven't 
her letter came today and um, I have shared it with you this evening. You haven't had time to read it, but I, I'm sure you will find it a most interesting summary of the issues that she has championed um, and I think gives you a good indication of how much she has given to the system. And the third item is one that um, it's almost hard to bring up, but I, I feel that uh, this is a time to do it. Barbara Powers, who has been in the system for a number of years, who has taken a number of leadership roles as well as teaching roles in the system, has asked to be relieved of her duties as principal and to be reassigned as a classroom teacher uh, for a variety of reasons which she has outlined to you in her letter. And for the public's benefit, this is essentially a family decision. Um, and also, I think, reflects the respect that a very, very able administrator has for the classroom role, has made a decision that it is a time in her life, in her family's life, when um, having some extra time will be the right thing to do for her. I'm extremely pleased to say that she will not be leaving us, that she is uh, requesting, and we do have room in our uh, staffing list, and we will see that noted. Uh, she is also uh, requesting a half-time uh, half assignment so that she can complete her, uh, her, her change of lifestyle, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, I certainly have not worked with Barbara as long as you people have, but I want to say with all three of these people that I have been extremely impressed with the kind of dedication and ability um, and at least in Barbara's case, I'm awfully glad we're not going to lose her. Uh, for the others, I say Godspeed. Connie, do you want to take motions uh, as we go through these categories well, or go back to it at the end? Let me try to explain, <laughs> give you an opportunity to ask questions, clarification, uh, and the um, principles, ex with the exception of, uh, of Frank, who is um, the high school, is attending the um, funeral parlor uh, service for Jean Tebow. Uh, and I think, having talked it over with him, I think I can answer any questions that you have on the high school staffing. There are several issues here, and they're listed on the agenda. Not only the retirements and resignations that I have uh, just noted, we had one additional appointment of a continuing contract teacher. Uh, we are trying to give you a notification of faculty transfers. In some cases, those are people who have, well, in most cases, those are people who are teaching at the elementary level. Um, it is not at all uncommon for elementary teachers who hold certificates across um, several grade levels to uh, request and be granted a voluntary <coughs> transfer to another grade level. This is sometimes actually a form of staff development. Um, then we also, uh, as a result of our budget process, had some shrinking of some assignments, uh, but also some opportunities for people who had held full-time assignments in one field to um, be transferred to pick up another piece. That also shows up here. And um, the two requests for half-time personal leaves uh, that ends the list, that would be Barbara and uh, Deborah Jordan Pearson from the <coughs> kindergarten staff. I don't know that you want me to read this all the way through because it's a long list. So perhaps if you want to, uh, you have the summary list, you could vote on that summary list with one vote. But it might be the simplest thing to do for you to ask questions, clarification, and then we can see whether one or more votes would be. Charlie? On the potential principal opening, how soon would you start to advertise? Obviously, we have to do that um, very quickly. And uh, the process will be one that uh, clearly the main papers, the main state of main place, and a lot of people check, you know, the, the Sunday paper who are not only um, throughout the state of Maine, but also people in the New England area. Everybody realizes that that's a place to look. But we also send a placement bureaus, and it will, the process will not be uh, dissimilar from what you use for the superintendent search, not quite as complicated, but we'll try to make it a, you know, cast our net. So we essentially have two half-time positions and one full-time position in the elementary to fill this year, which is a small number for That's us. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a high school position. Yeah, I know. I was just 
This is the first time in the elementary that we haven't had to hire five, six, seven, eight teachers. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of reasons, obviously. We had some shrinking. We also had uh, a much smaller kindergarten class. If you notice in the, um, so far we've enrolled 114 in, in current kindergarten. What do we have, 139? Wait a minute. Oh, whatever, anyway, a lot more. Any other questions? Um, sure. When I spoke to you about the some of the eighth, seventh, and eighth grade positions, I didn't quite understand that um, seventh uh, that language art seventh grade position or class that's going to be taught is to relieve Mr. Jewett for administrative duty. Ah, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, we may have confused you more than we intended. We've given you all of our understanding of staffing positions for next year so that you would have a chance to see um, at least uh, and it can before right up to actual start of school we sometimes find some changes in these things so we will of course give you another list once we open have most people most teachers returned their contracts yes okay. so our biggest holes are in the high school issue well, obviously, we are dealing with, um, uh, okay, in the high school, hold on, I know we've got it marked here on the sheet. Um, we, are, we will be looking for a half-time art person. However, the two art teachers, because remember, we have a child care lead that you've already granted. Um, the two art teachers, however, have reorganized themselves uh, so that that is essentially going to be looking for somebody to teach the photography piece, uh, which the people who are involved with that feel that's going to be a very manageable um, way to deal with it. Um, as part of this packet that I've just presented you with, we are expanding um, Ms. Brownell's part-time position to a full-time position that's in math, um, which means that uh, we will be looking for a part-time math teacher. Uh, we also unfortunately have to look for a replacement for Dr. Hackett, which again is irreplaceable people. You can't find replacements, but somebody to teach the, uh, uh, however, what with uh, Paul Jackson coming back from sabbatical and so on, that amounts to a part-time position also. And now tragically, we must find another full-time science person to replace Mr. Tebow. Okay, are we ready for a uh, motion? I'm uh, trying to figure out what the motion should be. Uh, let me ask you a question first. Uh, did um, there were other retirements beyond those listed? And I look quickly at the April meeting. Were they in March or they, they've already Some been? Some of them we had okay. in October and well, not October, I don't think, but we had in uh, November, oh, yes. okay. December. Just wanted to make sure we haven't left any out, and uh, so we we uh, want to accept the. Retirements of Don Richards and Bess Hanna officially, correct? Yes, you don't. Um, we're no, noting. Don't have to. We note them. Pardon me? Yes, you do. Uh, teaching staff, you do have to take a vote. For our secretarial staff, it's noting it for okay. your purposes. It's, there's no reason why you can't take a vote, it's just that it's not technically needed. Okay. So it's, uh, it's Don Richards and Mary Jo Thompson. We need to vote on as retirees. That's good. Okay. Do I have such a motion? Good. Moved. Seconded. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay. Appointment of continuing contract teacher. <coughs> That's just one. That's correct? right. Yeah. Okay. Do I hear such a motion? Mm -hmm. Carolyn so Sloan. I move that we uh, uh, approve the continuing contract for Carolyn Sloan. Okay. Second. 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 Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Notification of faculty transfers doesn't need one. New teaching assignments. Request for half time personnel leaves. 
Connie, does that need a motion? Well, you need a motion for Jacqueline Petrillo because she was hired during the and school. Sarah Berman, I believe. And exactly, Sarah Berman. In fact, um, just to be on the safe side, why don't you take that whole section that says new teaching assignments? Because although Sarah Berman and uh, Jacqueline Petrillo have been working with us, they were hired as a part-time, part-year contract with the understanding that they had to be appointed again to a regular contract. Um, the, and the rest of that list is really uh, people that are on staff but will be picking up either an additional piece or a piece somewhat different from what they are now doing. Now again, technically these are all people on contract, that is absent Sarah and Jacqueline who are clearly not on a rollover contract, but the rest of them are all on contract anyway. But I think it would be a kind of a nice neat thing if we just spoke for that particular bunch okay. as a new teaching assignment. Gotcha. No te new teaching assignments. Uh, do I hear a motion? That the list, that's Sarah Berman, Mary Bronze, Randy Perkins, Jane Alice, Susan Tarion, Elaine Brownell, and Jacqueline Petrillo. So moved. Moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Now request for a half-time personal leave. Right. We have to approve that too. Barbara Powers and Deborah Jordan Pearson. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, approval of the superintendent's nomina nominations to administrator recertification governing board. Okay, those are the kind of assignment that you have 25 people come forward knocking on your door begging. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Nancy Hutton has agreed to serve um, as the um, uh, actual appointed person and uh, alternate Nancy St. John. Okay, do I hear a motion? Uh, so moved. I second. Second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, report on the flexible benefit plan. Connie? Okay. Um, I sent out uh, some information on this, and I've tried to summarize this as clearly and succinctly as I can, um, realizing that the public uh, watches this, may or may not know anything about flexible benefits, and I will try not to get bogged down in all the details. Um, in a nutshell, my understanding of the situation is that um, during the past probably two years, there's been some discussion, uh, sometimes uh, associated with negotiations, sometimes uh, associated with presentations from insurance companies, sometimes uh, in informal conversations among people in the district, that they would like to have um, at least a form of flexible benefits plan. The one that uh, ultimately uh, is the one that is currently in place is a plan for all employees that uh, allows uh, employees to tax shelter the dollars that they contribute to benefits, uh, with one exception that simply refers to the fact that the contracts that are negotiated in this district ask for contributions from the employees for the uh, medical coverage and dental insurance. The situation being that you really are agreeing to a reduction in salary because uh, the, those dollars then are reduced, uh, taken out of the salary package and become in essence tax sheltered. Um, I was informed a few weeks ago by our attorneys who had been working on a separate um, referral on benefits that uh, they had some information to share with us and to explain. And as part of that explanation, it became clear that we did not have at that point a fully complete plan document. Uh, the situation for flexible benefits requires each employee that is eligible and, and in the flexible benefits plan everybody has to be eligible in one way or the other. Um, and we had gone through a process um, that again was started before I became superintendent and I was not aware frankly of all the steps that were involved until I kind of dug into it a little bit. But we had gone through the process of some explanations, um, some basic documents, some agreements that what we were trying to do was the essentially the salary reduction. 
and employees were contacted and asked to either uh, sign yes or no, did they want that as a flexible benefit, and that was begun in, in January 1. As our attorneys have checked over for completeness what kind of record we have on this, we have found that we really did not have the complete plan. So I included that in your packet. Now that is the one that our attorney has drawn up. Um, it has a few pieces that need some explanation. Uh, in effect, however, we do have a plan in place. We are not going to be asking employees to sign up again. There is one small group of employees with one benefit situation that I'll explain in a minute that we do have to, um, to bring into the requirements of the flexible benefits plan. Uh, but essentially, we're not really backing uh, over what we've already accomplished. We are, we are completing the process. Um, the plan document, I think I also included a summary, um, and I may have given you a sample sign-up that we will, as I said, we'll only need for uh, a few small, uh, a small unit. The issue that we have to, uh, really two issues, one is for you to, uh, to adopt uh, as an amendment to the plan that is in place, this plan that you've been presented with. Now, we did have, we were trying to get this all ready as a neat package for this particular meeting, and we ran into some trouble getting the figures absolutely updated back and forth between our attorneys in this office and so on. Uh, so I think you have an updated sheet here. Um, this, did you, have you already received your, did you get that? Oh, you gave it to me. The right numbers. Me. <coughs> Let's see, here we are. This is one of the problems with the sheet that was attached is that it was apparently um, based on last year's information. There was a change in the uh, benefits package beginning uh, that I believe you finished in November. You negotiated a change Correct. in November which also meant that there was some retroactivity. So these figures that you're now receiving are based on the actual figures that are now in place. All of that is um, fairly straightforward. The piece that is, is not part of the plan is that um, flexible benefits may vary depending on the actual negotiated agreements so that any unit that is negotiated the amount of contribution to Blue Cross or dental has been determined through that process. And that's really the end of it right there. That's all we need to, uh, to deal with. For those employees who are not part of a bargaining unit, they form a separate group, which is essentially made up of all others. That includes, for instance, the superintendent, the business manager, um, the maintenance and transportation supervisor, the hot lunch supervisor, I think we have eight or nine teacher assistants who are not part of a bargaining unit, the secretaries in my office upstairs, and uh, the uh, adult ed director, uh, chapter one teacher, the adult ed director, and assistant. Uh, some of these people are already receiving um, both dental and uh, medical benefits. Some of them have not been uh, eligible for dental. You cannot offer, under a flexible benefits plan, you cannot offer uh, selective benefits to any subgroup. So all others becomes a subgroup and they all have to have access to the same benefits. So that would uh, translate, practically speaking, into whether or not you take the dental away from those in that group who do have it or you give dental to those in that group who have not had access to it. The second piece of that is that there are some rules about the amount of, of dollars. And since the compensation for these people in this all other group does vary, uh, you have, there are some rules of thumb that we can follow and, and uh, you know, the attorney has given us some guidance on this, but we still do not yet have the exact schedule for you. Um, to determine what those should be. They do not have to be the same, but they have to be proportionately equal um, to the different kinds of compensation in that rather unequal group. The administrators have already gone through the process where they become a group with their own negotiated unit, but since this plan is dated 
um, January 1 through December, um, at least for purposes of um, uh, completing the process of putting the amendment to the plan in place, uh, they are regarded as the all others. Now, that's probably about as <laughs> clear as mine. You don't. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Go ahead, Charlie. I did weed through this, and, and I guess under the flexible benefits plan, she gave us three different plans here, or two plans and an explanation. Under optional benefit coverage, coverage page. options, page three. Okay, I think what I don't understand is each participant may choose under this plan to receive his or her full compensation for any plan year in cash or to have a portion of it applied by the board toward the cost of coverage. Is this only including all others or does this include the whole system? This is the plan, which in fact everybody has to have access to. In other words, they, um, what the intent of this particular language is the salary reduction if you want tax sheltered or you don't have to take it and you get, you get that benefit um, um, as you know as agreed to in the, in the negotiations um, that's the point of a flexible benefits plan if you have a negotiated salary <coughs> agreement let's conceivably that doesn't cover uh, some benefit then that particular agreement exempts those people from having access to the benefit okay for instance, if we do, we have uh, any of our negotiated agreements? Do they exempt dental? They exempt dental. Is there any no. negotiated agreement that doesn't cover dental? Okay, so we have some negotiated agreements that do not cover dental, and they can still be part of the flexible benefits plan because that particular agreement has been made through negotiations. Now, as a matter of fact, uh, however, when you have the all other category. The issue is everybody in the same category has to have access to the same benefits, not necessarily the same dollars, but the same benefits. I guess, I guess my question of clarification is that, say, in a, teach, a teacher and a teacher negotiated contract, mm -hmm. if they opt not to take the medical, do they get in cash? No. That's no. my question, no. I guess. No. That's why I'm not clear. No. No. What this does, Charlie, it, it, the family coverage right now the, fam the person with the family coverage has to contribute $1,009 a year towards the cost of that plan. What this does, you take the, the $1,009 divided by the 26 payroll and, and then you, you, you shelter whatever that amount is on a biweekly basis. No, I understand yeah. that because I have that but it doesn't, it where doesn't, I work. But it I doesn't address people I guess not getting you, the benefit to get it. You want to make sure that they aren't eligible for exactly. opt for that money if they don't take it in benefits. I guess that's my that, that is uh, cash. That's my, my understanding. If, uh, if, for example, a teacher elected to have no coverage at all, as many do because they have equivalent or better coverage to their spouse, that's it. They don't get any money. Okay. That's why I can under quite understand for any plan year in cash. It's, not, it's okay. not particularly clear. It's no, yeah, it is. I, I agree. I know what the plan is, in effect. And I can understand why. Um, but I think what I would, uh, would suggest, um, let me make a note of this. I know what the intent of this is, but I agree with you. If we have any concerns about the way the actual wording is, there are some typos in here too, I've and uh, some other issues that um, would need some cleaning. I think what you can do, however, is to adopt this as amendment to the plan and then specifically state out uh, some concerns that you know, you know, you're adopting in principle so long as it does not mean this, or so long as it does mean this. In this case, we're very clear. This is not a cash in lieu of benefits plan. But this would make it very muddled. This it is certainly, not clear. Um, I think it is. There are some other pieces here that are spelled out a little better than that. But that, in case there's any question about it, I know what the plan should be. And I would be comfortable with having that kind of statement amended to your motion. Because I, I could not vote for this with that in place. No, well, okay. it would be incorrect. Okay. 
I mean, the plan itself, as in place and operating, is simply a reduction in salary plan with one employee who puts, has money deducted from her uh, pay for child care benefits uh, that she's choosing to shelter that and this, as you saw, a whole separate plan mm -hmm. just for that one purpose. Uh, and we only, that, have, we only have one person doing We have doing one that? person taking That's advantage surprising. of That's surprising with the number of child. Mm -hmm. Whether perhaps other people were not thinking about it um, from just they were heard it and saw it but didn't really think of the implications. But that is a fairly, you know, it's small benefit really, but at the same time it can add up. Um, and I, the intent of this and the way in which it is acting in operation is that there is uh, a salary reduction piece that employee dollars, that is the employee's contribution to the dental coverage or the medical coverage is simply reduced, you know, taken off to one side, taken off the top. So it doesn't appear as income, it's a salary reduction package. That is it, there is no cash in lieu or that type of thing. Okay, that and part of it, I do understand because I have that in place for myself, so I, I understand right. the pre now, We do have a situation for administrators, and that is part of the all other category in this particular package, where there is cash in lieu of uh, benefit. I mean, that is, uh, in my understanding, that is, it's been, uh, was part of the controversy last summer that uh, that was not being reported as income, it's now being reported as income and tax, but it is cash in lieu of benefit. So that particular portion of the employees who are part of this all other group needs to be um, scrutinized and written up and framed and that's why I, I've already called your attention to that particular piece. Um, we simply haven't had time to get that one straightened out and I have to bring that piece back to you in June. So we are not, if we approve this, we are not approving that particular piece. That well. you, all you would be doing would be approving in principle you understand that the all other group includes some people who are getting some benefits that others in that group are not getting and it has to be access to all the benefits not necessarily the same dollars but the same benefits yeah uh, going back to 4.1 I think it is written correctly although uh, it's a confusing confusing issue to begin with uh, what it says is that each participant may choose under this plan to receive his or her full compensation for any plan year, the compensation being the salary, not the benefit. Then it goes on to say that they may, however, choose to reduce their compensation, their salary, by enough to fund that portion of the plan which they have to pay themselves. I think that's what that clause says. I, I know that that's uh, the intent. And that is certainly the intent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think, I think we can approve it as it is. However, let's note that, you know, 4.1 should mm -hmm. be double-checked with counsel uh, and make sure that that is the, uh, the intent. But on rereading it, uh, I think the key is, you know, the compensation is salary. It's not the... It's not the employee okay, share of the plan. It's just cash sitting there. That's not an appropriate term, I don't think. Well, you know, it is in cash. Your, your, your salary and your wages are paid in cash. Well, maybe we need to add salary but, or something to the... I, it's not clear to me. Yeah. And I... Okay, well, why don't we just, uh, you know, note that down. There may be definitions uh, in here. Let me go back and take a quick look. I don't think that's covered, but... Uh, mm. No, you can't define every word, and that one is not. But but it's clearly salary then, okay. and that is the intent. So, do you have any further explanations on that, Connie? That you well, or there um, for any questions from the board is actually where we were, I guess. I have no idea how clear I am, so I will try to be clearer if need be. Any other questions on these uh, three documents? Okay, I would entertain a motion that we approve them subject to the double and triple checking that uh, Charlie has uh, suggested. Um, so moved. Moved and seconded. Moved, do I hear a second? Any further discussion? 
Do you have any doubts with the bathroom? I still have doubts. I will vote as a negative until, you know, until it's clear. <coughs> okay, it's been moved and sent. Any further discussion? Any further questions? Okay, it's uh, been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? All opposed? Four to one. Carries. Very good. Okay, I think that wraps up our our business for tonight, with the exception of a motion to go into uh, executive session to discuss contract negotiations. I move. Sorry, but, uh, that's my last motion. Move that we adjourn and go into executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. Any personnel issues? Connie? Any personnel I issues? No. Negotiations. Negotiations. Okay, it's been seconded. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. <laughs>